Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video on my channel. And it's been a little while since I've uploaded, but I'm going to have quite a few videos coming your way during this lockdown period. Perfect time to get back onto the YouTube channel and start making some more football related videos. Today I'm going to be doing a video about my beloved Derby County and I'm going to be ranking our 19 to 20 squad from elite to get rid immediately. I've got all the full-time Derby County players on here. I have no uh, lone players that I will be doing today. So before I get into it, if you are brand new to the channel, please do subscribe on that big red button down below. And if you enjoy the video, please do leave a like down below as well. Make sure you join into the discussion about my tier list in the comment section down below. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first player I have here is Curtis Davis. Number 33 and ex-club captain. He's been a solid centre-back ever since Richard Keogh did depart the club. Although our away form has been quite poor and our away defence, especially down south in London, has been quite poor with Curtis Davis in the squad, conceding quite a few 3 nils. To be fair, he has been quite a solid defender next to Matt Clark, even when Matt Clark's been out injured and he's paired up next to Andre Wisdom, he's been the more solid head. He does have it in him to get caught out by a attacker's peso, and he is now 34 years of age for that reason. Because he doesn't quite lack the pace to be a centre-back nowadays, he is a very much a header and kick it. I'm just going to put him in poor. Next up, we have Ikechi Anya. Without even needing to say anything, he needs to go in get rid hasn't featured in the league for Derby County in over two seasons and the sooner he departs Derby the best for both parties. Then we have a Derby County player who's currently out on loan at Man City and of course it's Scott Carson. The way Philip Cochran wants to play football using his centre-back, same with Frank Lampard, Scott Carson is too old I'd say and his distribution is quite poor to the centre backs, he's too slow. And for that reason, I'm going to have to put him in poor with Curtis Davis. I don't think he'll be able to play Koku Ball, especially from what we saw last season with his distribution, even when he had the likes of Tamori and Keo in front of him. He was still was quite slow on the ball and quite panicky. Even so, I'm a little less panicky even when Keller is distributing the ball. But next up, we have Dwayne Holmes, and Dwayne Holmes for me has to go into Derby County's elite. To think Derby County only paid 700000 for him, that has to be one of the bargains for Derby in the past 10 years because we really don't have a good record with signing that many high quality players at a decent price. But Dwayne Holmes, arguably player of the season for this season, when he came back from injury, he was quite slow building up into the season. But since he found his form, he's been unstoppable. His goals and assists and just the way he can pick up the ball and run at a player with his low centre of gravity is unbelievable. And even some of his goals like against Middlesbrough away from home, where it may have came off his shin, but wherever it counts and it was a cracking goal. Next up we have Tom Huddleston. I'm going to put Tom Huddleston in average because he can have his game where he is a top class championship midfielder. Especially with his passing, his passing ability cannot be questioned, but his head Pace just isn't cut up for it anymore and as he gets older it's only going to get worse. You could argue to say that he doesn't really need his pace in his game and he doesn't really evolve around that but when a player is running at you you're the central holding midfielder. He isn't really cut up for that in the championship anymore so he goes in average for me but purely because his passing ability still has a place in the squad. Next up we have Florian Josefsson and for me has to go down with a catchy Anya. We expected so much from Florian Josefsson when he joined Derby County from Brentford but has yet to deliver. Popped up with a few goals last season but this season has been even worse if that's even possible with zero goals and I think maybe just one or two assists. Been dropped from the side completely before the season was suspended only to make a few substitute appearances but not manage to get on the pitch due to some injuries. I just think that the sooner Florian Yosevzi moves on from the club the better. Next up we have youngster Jason Knight. Jason Knight is a top quality championship midfielder slash winger wherever Philip Cocky wants Jason Knight to play he will play he doesn't lack any sort of 
courage or determination he has all that he even has the confidence for such a young player as well just lacking the slightest bit of ability which will come as obviously as he grows as a player for me has to go into very good next up we have tom lawrence now if you'd asked me about Tom Lawrence last season, I would have said average or poor. Because Tom Lawrence last season, he was, he was a player where you could rely on him one every 15 games and he would pop up with a shot outside the box. This season, Tom Lawrence has scored seven goals from outside the box and the way he can pick up the ball and drive, no other player in our team can really do that. He's hands down the best at driving forwards off a wing. Him and Jaden Bogle, I think, are the best in the squad. And especially where if you play Tom Lawrence in a number 10 position, like we did against Middlesbrough at home, he does pop up with those goals. Like for example, he scored two against Middlesbrough in that one. I think if you give Tom Lawrence the freedom and the ability is there to do what he can do. You see it against Huddersfield away from home in the first day of the season. Absolute Tom Lawrence blinder there. Two brilliant Tom Lawrence goals. And all we need from Tom Lawrence is even more of that. So for that reason, I'm going to put Tom Lawrence in very good. Then next up, we have left back Max Lowe. I quite like Max Lowe. I think he's almost top of our squad list for tackles this season. You can question him on his defensive abilities, though, when he turns comes to a player taking him on and running past him and his positional sense. But his attacking ability, also like Tom Lawrence's driving up the left wing, is solid. The pace he possesses is unbelievable. And I think he does still have room to grow as a player. As you can see in games when he, he does seem to lack confidence. That's why I think Philip Koku has preferred Craig Forsyth in some games when we might have been backs up against it because Max Lowe can seem to be a bit shy. But other than that, he's a solid championship left back and I think potential to improve, so I'm going to put him in average. Then after that, we have Scott Malone. This season, Scott Malone has been quite poor. For whatever reason, he hasn't been able to replicate some of the form he showed last season. Last season, I said he was one of Frank Lampard's best signings. Especially at left back where we did have a few injuries and did have to bring in Ashley Cole. I thought that Scott Malone was actually quite quality on that left wing. His crossing ability can be questioned, but when he does get the crosses right, they are quality. And I think he's also an underrated leader in the squad. He is one to shout at the younger players and shout at a player if he isn't doing his job correctly. And I think his quality is there, but he... When he's not in form, he, is, he can be a dreadful player. And I think some of his downwards form this season is because Philip Cocky played him at a left wing back role. And when we brought him in, he got sent off against Reading. And now Max Lowe's found a bit of form. He hasn't been, really been able to get into the side. But I honestly quite rate Scott Malone, so I'm going to put him in average. And then we have Lee Buchanan. At the start of the season, came in as a promising youngster, but for whatever reason, was dropped from the side. Wasn't really impressed by what I saw. I think some of the hype came from his debut goal against Scunthorpe where he had to be given a chance was reasonably poor against Brentford in that 3-0 defeat at Griffin Park and not one of the most talented youngsters coming through the club in my opinion I think he's just an average uh, championship centre back slash left back not really too sure what his preferred position is I think he's average then we have Jack Marriott okay if you ask about a Jack Marriott fit, who can play games, who has his confidence, Jack Marriott can be one of the best strikers and finishers in the championship. Hands down, after Wayne Rooney, our best finisher at Derby. But his problem is he's never fit, and when he does get fit, he's always seeming to lack confidence in front of goal. Like we saw when he came in against Barnsley in Wayne Rooney's first game, I think he missed about three clear-cut chances before he put his chance away. He's going to have to go into average. Next up, we have the man himself, Chris Martin. No questions about it. Has to go into elite for this season. And what he's done at Derby before. The thing Derby County didn't pay a single penny for Chris Martin is unbelievable. I think he's now ranked 18th in Derby's all-time top goal scorers. And if he doesn't get a new contract this season, I will be very surprised. Because the way he contributes to our play is like no other. There's no other championship striker who plays the way Chris Martin plays. No one calls him a nuisance to the centre-backs as Chris Martin does. And the way he allows the other players in the team to play their game is unbelievable. And for that reason, he has to go into elite. Next up, we have Christian Bielik. And what we saw from Christian Bielik before he was out injured, I think he was quite solid. 
I think the way he was built up to be, he's our record signing, of course, and he was built up to be this player that would be a midfield maestro. But he was playing in League One last season and he's been brought in as a youngster who will develop to be one of the best players in the championship, no doubt. But he had to take his time to get used to the championship. And as just as he was doing that, then he got suspended. And he did have quite a few yellow card problems as well. I remember against Wigan on Boxing Day, he, had, he did have to be brought off halfway through the first half because he was so close to just getting himself sent off like that. But in terms of ability and potential, he has to go into very good. Then we have Max Bird. Frank Lampard at Chelsea has been said to be interested in purchasing Max Bird for around £5 million. And I'm just wondering which leg he's going to get for that. Because if we're going to sell Max Bird, we need to sell him for around £15 million. Because what a player he is. No real youngster, midfield youngster, should be able to come into a midfield and pretty much match for match a Wayne Rooney in that midfield. And he is doing that. And the way he's walked into this Derby County starting 11 and made that midfield spot his own, providing the competition to Christian Bielik, is amazing. The way he looks doesn't look like he should be a player that he is. But the composure and the way he demands the midfield is like no other. And for me, he has to go into elite. For sure, we'll be playing in the Premier League one day. Then we have the youngster Jaden Bogle. Bill was a revelation for Derby County last season when he was brought in by Frank Lampard from the academy. Made that step up and really showed what he was worth. A real bright spark in Derby's team last season, even with the likes of Mason Mount and Harry Wilson. But this season did struggle a little bit, has struggled here and there, but on his day, is probably one of our best players can take on a man one of our players who actually shows a bit of skill on the ball and drive forward and drive put in a half decent cross his ability as a defender is improving as we go through the season as well you are seeing some of the mistakes that he did used to make creep out of his game now and i think only got a premier league player to, on our hands and soon we'll have to go to the Premier League and for me he goes in elite. Then we have Graham Shinney. Graham Shinney for me is I quite like him okay he can split decision on how good he is at Derby making the step up to the championship from the Scottish Premier League last season. He moved from Aberdeen for on a free to Derby and this was his first season. I think he's quite good he made his league start against Luton Town in that 2-0 win and he was unbelievable that day he's one of those players that shows a bit of drive shows a willingness to get into a tackle loves a sliding tackle and he shows a willingness to win the ball back when the other team are coming at us he does lack a little bit of that championship quality for be a top class championship midfielder though although I do believe as soon as he starts to settle into the championship a little bit more he will still improve I don't think we've seen the best from Graham Shinney and for me I think he has to go in very good next up we have Louis Sibley I'm gonna straight away put Louis Sibley into very good made his league start in the last game before the season got postponed um, probably scored Derby County's goal of the season versus Blackburn what a goal that was and shows some of the quality that we've been seeing in the under 23s from Louis Sibley and um, I think we got one hell of a player on our hands with him and especially as he is a Ram himself. Then after this, we have Martin Waghorn, a very underrated player, not only by Derby County fans, but by the whole of the championship. Derby County is leading goal scorer this season, and because he should have had a few more goals where he has missed open goals, he doesn't get the credit he deserves. He played every single game under Philip Cockey in the league, and just that deserves to be in here as it shows he's consistent in his performances and he does pop up with those goals he scored our first away goal in like a few months against Wigan that really propelled the team on into this good run of form but I don't think he gets enough credit for that especially at the start of the season when we were quite poor against the likes of uh, Stoke City he was the one to get two goals although he did miss an open goal in that and for me has to go in very good a lot of people disagree with me for that, but I think Martin Wankhorn is a very good striker. Then we have Morgan Whitaker. From what we see in the first team of Morgan Whitaker, he doesn't make himself out to be a solid championship player yet. 
you can see the glimpses of quality when he is on the ball, but he's his movement and on the ball. And normally when Philip Cocky brings Morgan Whitaker on, we're either chasing a game where we really have no hope on, or we're closing down a lead. And his job is literally to just run at the opposition. So he doesn't really get in those opportunities to show what he's really made of. But I do think we've got a quality youngster on our hands in Morgan Whitaker. I'm gonna put him in average. Next up we have Andre Wisdom. I think Andre Wisdom has gone underrated as well this season. I think he deserves a bit more credit than he's got. Come back into the side, he played a few games under Lampard, not as much as he probably wanted to due to Jaden Bogle coming into the side, but really played a part in this season for Derby. I think his quality at centre-back or at right-back, wherever he needs to play. I think for me is a very good player for our Derby squad. And next up we have Keller Ruse. No more needs to be said about Keller Ruse than get rid. I think his Derby County career is over. As a person, Keller Ruse is a very good guy. Does a lot for the Derby County Community Trust. But as a player, if you lack that much confidence at the club, it's very rare that you're going to get that back. Especially, you won't get the support of the fans back. I highly doubt it anyway after his performances this season. Especially after his playoff mistake last season. I think some fans will never forgive him for that. We I gave him a chance this season and he really hasn't performed. Then we have Mason Bennett who's currently out on loan at Millwall. But before he did go out on loan I think he was one of those players that Philip Koku could bring on as an impact substitute. The same as Frank Lampard did the season before. But the thing is, with Mason Benny, I don't think he pass, possesses the quality to be able to push for a team going for the Premier League other than an impact sub. Especially after his drink drive involvement, I will think that Mason Bennett will move on. And for me, he is just a poor player, but has those good games where he can show a little bit of glimpse. But I think he is one of those one of our own merchants a little bit in my opinion and I think has to go into poor. Next up we have Craig Forsyth. I think he has to go into average for me. The way he has come back from three ACL injuries to still put his place in, a, in the squad. He's played at both centre back and left back this season and I think he's been a quality player although when he does a centre back his positioning can be wrong leading him to cause those mistakes that he has crept into his game as he has slowed down as a player due to him getting older but still a championship level left back as we saw against Stoke when we beat him 4-0. He can match Max Lowe's quality there I do think he is a quality player. And finally, we have George Evans. I'm going to put George Evans in average. I know a lot of Derby fans, he splits his opinion as well, as he has been injured quite a bit for us. But I do think the way he plays the game in midfield is something a little bit different to what we have. He's a good passer of the ball and a good mover. And he, he knows where the space is on the pitch as well. I don't think some players do struggle with that. And I think he's an average player for our Derby team. Well, that's the end of today's video guys, if you did enjoy please do leave a like and share this to your Derby County supporter friends and family and make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter down below, leave a like as well of course and comment in the comment section down below if I got any of these drastically wrong. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys later.